Put your foot down, put your feet on the ground. You can hear what she says if you listen. Put your foot down, put your feet on the ground. You can hear what she says if you listen. Cause the sound of the river as it moves across the stones is the same sound as the blood in your body as it moves across your bones. Are you listening? Are you listening? Hello from the Oregon Synod Reparations team. We are a team of volunteers coming together over the past two years to carry forward a resolution overwhelmingly passed by you, the Oregon Synod. This is our reparation team's second time to pair with cluster deans. Last spring, we connected with deans and clusters to share what we were learning about the land under our synod offices, which are located at Emanuel Hospital. You can find the videos for those stories on the Oregon Synod YouTube channel. That discovery of our Lutheran Hospital's involvement in the displacement of a vibrant black central albina community has compelled a group of us into an impactful year of stories and learning. Thanks Shirley. So we're back on the Oregon Synod office land and property to share some stories that you guys have learned. So I'm curious what learnings came up that stirred you. A huge impact or tension for me has been thinking about those very years that a vibrant community was being intentionally demolished right around Emanuel Hospital here. Um, because my dad worked at Emanuel as a chaplain and we lived in a neighborhood not so far away, the, the Kearns neighborhood, um, during those very years. It's just, it's disturbing to me to realize how effective the system is at silencing these stories. Um, especially when I now hear survivors say how hard they have been trying for all of these years to tell the stories. My faith at this point just compels me toward deep listening, to imagine steps toward repair and gathering as many people into these conversations as possible. Tension emerged for me when I heard different perspectives of the Emanuel Hospital story. The good intentions of hospital leadership and the people harmed outside our Lutheran community. Our call as Lutherans is to turn outward and to listen to the stories of the community of Central Albina. We cannot ignore the truth that our benefit was at great cost to others. I've always hated what seems like injustice, that a government entity can take property through eminent domain for a supposedly higher purpose while giving whatever it chooses in return. In the Emanuel expansion case, many folks received nothing or a pittance. I'd been hearing about the Emanuel expansion for decades, but I never realized until recently that some of the vacant land around the hospital was acquired that way, and that the destruction of the homes and businesses continued even after the expansion was canceled, so no higher purpose was ever accomplished, and that replacement homes in the neighborhood that were promised were never built. It's been more than 50 years. It's long past time for restitution. So what are some of the relationships that have been surprising for you that have come from all of this process of learning? Well, Sarah, every relationship we have developed has been impactful. Whether we realized it at the time or not, collectively, the relationships have enriched my life and I am reminded over and over again that Emanuel Hospital and the Oregon Synod have been complicit in the destruction of this once vibrant and loving community. Some historians believe that if it had been allowed to continue to flourish, Central Albina would have become the Black Wall Street of the West Coast. Instead, the thriving community was intentionally destroyed over time by one urban renewal project after another. Two people we heard from, one a survivor of the Emanuel displacement of the early 70s, 
the other a survivor of one of the other urban renewal projects that, over time, destroyed the thriving albina community. They told us that if we succeed in bringing any monetary restitution to the impacted families, even 50 cents, we'll do more than anybody else has in 50 years. We have had so many really impactful stories and um, relationship building moments along the way. Um, but the two recent ones that are just standing out for me, one is um, a recent discussion with a former nurse at Emmanuel who is just so grateful that we are coming together to uncover and share the stories because she heard so many painful stories from the black community during those years. But she just felt so alone and unsure of how to even begin to share the story or begin to address the injustice that she was hearing and that the community was experiencing. Um, another recent standout uh, connection is with a black artist in the community, the albina community, who said, finally, at 71 years old, people want to hear the story. So there's one more member of the reparations team that had a story to share and couldn't be here today to stand with us on this land. So we wanted to make sure that she got a chance to share her story as well. A story of one recent action that was a culmination of all of the stories that you just heard. On February 23rd, we invited Lutherans and other members of the community to participate in a public concession about our complicity in the removal of people from Central Albina neighborhood in Portland. We met behind our synod offices and then, as a group, we sang, walked through the empty land where homes and businesses once stood, heard stories about this vibrant community, and our, professed our harm done to the community surrounding Emanuel Hospital. Publicly, we made a commitment towards steps of action, initiatives that will tell the whole story more widely, and the establishment of a fund of restitution for the people who lost their homes and livelihood in the name of progress. Rise up, brand new day. You know that love will find a way. Let me hear you. Rise up, brand new day. You know that love.